And we are back with more exciting Pokemon theories. We'll explore the second half of the iceberg of Pokemon theories today. Click here for part one. Let's jump into it. Layer three. Marsh badge is the soul badge. Oh, I heard about this one. Uh, basically, the Marsh Badge and the Soul Badge's name should be flipped, right? And, and the, the logo for it too. Because Koga gives you the Soul Badge, right? And Sabrina gives you the Marsh Badge. But that doesn't make any sense. The Psychic Type Gym Leader should give you the Soul Badge. And the fucking Poison Type Leader should give you the Marsh Badge. I feel like that kind of makes sense. What is the Mystery Zone? Oh, if you've ever used a Walkthrough Walls glitch in Gen 4, you've seen the Mystery Zone, yeah. Basically, when you go out of bounds into like an un unnamed area, it just says it's the Mystery Zone. Okay, I've seen this. Herman Cain quoting Mewtwo. Yeah, this is a good meme. Um, I don't know if you remember this. I believe these words came from the Pokemon movie. The media pointed that out. I'm not sure who the original author is, so don't go write an article about the poem. But it says a lot about where I am, where I am with my wife and my family, and where we are as a nation. Life can be a challenge. Life can seem impossible. It's never easy when there's so much on the line. But you and I can make a difference. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a good meme. Presidential candidate, by the way. Okay. All right. Um, Remoraid is a real gun. I don't know what that... I, I know that Remoraid is supposed to look like a gun, basically, and then Artillery is supposed to look like a tank. I don't know what they mean by real gun. Like, it's obviously not a real gun. It's it's a Pokemon in a video game. Oh. Oh, yeah. This is from the 97 Space World demo. These sprites, they look way more like an actual gun and an actual tank. I guess they change it to look less like a gun and a tank, which is better design, in my opinion. It's more subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bike shop text glitch. If you've ever watched a Gen 1 speedrun, you've seen this. Basically, you can use the bike shop to make, to get instant text within Pokemon. I don't know if it's in yellow. I know it's in red and blue um, until you get a yes or no um, text screen again. So you can speed up the game a lot. It's not in yellow. Okay. Yeah. It's in red and blue. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. James is Ash. Is there going to be an Ash's dad for every single layer? <laughs> I think so. All right. Let's go over these. Here's a comment on a Kotaku article. That's all I could find for this theory. Ash, Ash's father is James of Team Rocket. He went back in time, met Ash's mother. <laughs> I feel like this should be further down as all if all that we're basing it on is a Kotaku article comment, but okay. Genesect is Kabutops. I feel like this one's pretty likely. Basically, Kabutops is like a is is um they look pretty similar. Kabutox entry. It is thought to have in inhabited beaches 300 million years ago and is protected by a stiff shell. Capita would have evolved during this time, meaning there was Capitops 300 million years ago as well. Genesect. Over 300 million years ago, it was feared as the strongest of hunters. It's been modified by Team Plasma. I feel like this is kind of likely, you know? I think this is pretty... Th uh, this doesn't seem ridiculous. The 300 million is so specific. I feel like, honestly, this is kind of likely. I, this is pretty likely, I think. Original Hex Maniac. I don't know what that means. Does anyone know what this is about? Oh, yeah, this is pretty nuts. If it the Hex Maniac is a trainer class from the Pokemon series of video games, initially appearing as a minor class. The appearance and the personality of the in game representation has made it popular among fans. Although the X Maniac class first appeared in 2002 with the release of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, it's not until 2013 when Pokemon X and Y was released when the modern incarnation of the trainer class appeared. In game, the class is portrayed by a crazed appearing young woman with a black dress, and disheveled hair, and a purple cloth. Despite being a minor character, the Hex Maniac character has proved to be a popular character among Pokemon fans. Over 600 pieces of fan art depicting the character can be found on DeviantArt. Okay, cool. I don't know what the original part is referring to, but... Okay. Gen 1 shiny hunting. In case you didn't know, you can actually hunt for shinies in Gen 1. Because in Gen 2, whether or not a Pokemon is shiny is determined by its DVs, which is the old version of IVs. Um, so if you, you can like actually RNG Manip in Gen 1 for specific DVs, or just normally hunt, and then trade those into Gen 2 and they'll be shiny. Another possible but unlikely candidate for Father of Ash Ketchum is Yan. Yep, the same Pokemon challenges Yan we all know and love who strong mentally and fierce Pokemon elicits pure evidence along alone for his being Ash's father. Yet there's more. Like Ash, Yan also has hair, a hitchhiker's thumb, pointy chin, and acts goofy. True! Fucking true. Alright. 
So yeah, you can shine out in Gen 1. Um, 9-11 encounter rate. So apparently, this was find out, find out pretty recently, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Is it Diamond and Pearl or Platinum? In one of the Gen 4 games, the encounter rate for certain Pokemon actually changes specifically if the game's date is 9-11. There's no real explanation as to why. It's a bunch of dates, not only 9-11. Okay, that makes it a lot less interesting. What is Dawn Fan? Anyone know what that's a reference to? I can't find anything on it. <laughs> Another very possible and unlikely candidate for Father of Ash Ketchum is Xi Jinping. <laughs> I have no idea what this Dawn Fan thing is a reference to and I honestly can't find anything on it. Hey, maybe someone in the YouTube comment knows. Leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. Ron Paul. <laughs> I have no idea. Ron Paul Pokemon theme parody remix. Is that what this is about? <laughs> Wait, is this real? There's no way this is real. This is so much worse than Pokemon Go to the Poles. To catch them is his real test. To train them is his cause. He will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Each delegate to understand the power that's inside. There's no way this is real. What the fuck? Where's Confection Witch? <laughs> what the fuck is this? This is three minutes long. Does the lyrics ever change? This only has 1.6k views. This really is a deep cut. So stupid. They honestly, what's kind of impressive is they got a singer who actually sounds kind of similar to the original song. Honestly. Wait, is this the original singer? The original singer of the theme supported Ron Paul. Is this the same guy? That's insane! What? What a sick piece of trivia! It's like in one of those quizzes where you have to guess whether something is true or false. Or it's like three three lies and a truth. The original singer of the Pokemon theme made a version of the Pokemon opening theme advertising the Ron Paul 2012 campaign. So stupid. All right, that was that was the coolest one yet. I'm not gonna lie, that was by far the most entertaining one. I had no idea that was a thing. <laughs> How stupid is that? The lock capsule is an unobtainable key item that was first included in the game data of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver. It is not legitimately available in any game. The lock capsule's menu sprite differs between Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver and Pokemon Black and White. Pokemon Black and White, you have. It would have been the only way to obtain TM95 Snarl. 
but was never released in Pokemon Black and White 2. Team 95 can be obtained in regular gameplay. Pokemon Heart Gold has no use. It's received via mystery gift with a menu option view lock capsule card. Is there any theories on what it does? Drayano repurposed it in Storm Silver. Oh, he did, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don Fan might be Ash's dad. All right, seizures weren't Porygon's fault. So I guess for those who don't know, there was an episode of the original Pokemon anime that had like um, one particular scene that caused kids to have seizures. I don't know. Seizures weren't Porygon's fault. Upon hearing that it had been banned from the anime, Porygon was enraged. After all, it did not do anything wrong. It was Pikachu's lightning attacks that caused children to have seizures. Oh! Oh yeah, the animation that caused the seizure wasn't actually Porygon, it was Pikachu doing an electric type attack. I don't know if this is... I don't know what this meme post is. Every year, Porygon would watch in envious rage as he watched Pikachu be praised and adored even more. Pikachu was never punished. Indeed, part, practically every shirt, tote bag, game, book, doll, sticker, backpack, balloon from the Pokemon brand had Pikachu's deceptive lying face slapped onto it. Pikachu was a celebrity, revered as the innocent, lovable mascot of the franchise. Pokemon knew the truth, but everyone else ignored it. Trying to make Pikachu- I, it feels like I'm, re I'm reading a twit longer right now. <laughs> he, and, him and, he and his family, Porygon2 and Porygon Z, were never allowed to appear in the anime, save for a brief introduction in a terrible movie that nobody cared about. They could never show their face for fear that they would reveal the truth about Pikachu. For years, being computer software, they lived alone inside of the code of a copy of Microsoft Excel 2002. What? This is such a sick shit post. Holy shit. Stored on a forsaken, forgotten computer in Professor Oak's basement. Unlike other Pokemon who were paid handsome salaries for their appearances in the anime, the poor Pokemon family had nothing. Their only means of survival was to eat away at the data in Oak's spreadsheets. And each new addition to the family only meant less time before they would run out of cells and be forced to starve. Putting Don Fan in Google translates from Japanese into English translates to Don Juan. Okay, maybe that's it. That's a good ass shit post. Human Pokemon relationships. Uh, I do not want to Google that. <laughs> Does anyone know what this specifically refers to? Like, is there like mentions of this in like the anime or the games or something? Mr. Mime tapping Ash's mom. I think we're getting to that later. In the manga, there was an implied impregnation. Canalave, library, human, Pokemon, relationship. In the Canalave City Library from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, there's a book titled Sinnoh Folk Stories Part 3, detailing the closer relationships that Pokemon and humans once had with each other, and the Western copies of the game that say that Pokemon used to eat at the same tables as humans. However, in the Japanese version, it seems that the Pokemon and humans were even closer than that, claiming that they married each other and there was no difference to distinguish between the species. It should go without saying why this line was banned. With the marriage between Pokemon and humans, there is a connotation that implies that they must also have had sexual relations to in order to cons consummate the marriage and no matter where you are from, best best bestiality is a no-go. Well, apparently, except if you're from Japan. Hell yeah, brother. Back in my day, we could date our Gardevoirs and our Miltanks. Toxtricity poster. What is that about? Oh, there's a Gigantum Gigamax tox Toxtricity poster found in Ultra Sun and Moon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. The, the G Gigantamax Toxtricity. It's right there, guys. Do you guys not see it? It's right there. It might. That might actually be it. The colors are... That concludes layer three. We're going deeper, boys. We're going deeper. Makes Gen 1 Jinx even worse. True. <sighs> Victini is the atomic bomb. Here's a victoro.net forum post. Oh, it's a screenshot of a... Uh, okay, can I just say how I got to this? Hold on. So I got to this. I googled Victini is the atomic bomb. So I found a game FAQs post from seven years ago, which is post links to a victoryroad.net forum post. And the victoryroad.net forum post has a screenshot of a 4chan post. What? what how? Jesus Christ. Why didn't the person on game FAQs just link the screenshot? Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Ugh, okay. Some interesting ideas came out of a discussion on Victini earlier in the day. Victini's name is a contraction of victory and tiny. His species has been revealed as victory Pokemon by the official sources. He is indeed a tiny Pokemon weighing in at 4 kilograms, the same as a Mew, with about 9 pounds, about the same as the weight of an adolescent or very small adult cat. His type is Fire Psychic. Some more details came out of Korokoro scans earlier today. 
You can find these over at Cerebi.net. His dex entry reads, it makes it, it makes limitless energy inside its body. It releases its energy on any Pokemon who touches it. Victini appears at the bottom of Liberty Garden Tower, a lighthouse, and will reappear straight away if you knock it out. Incidentally, another famous lighthouse statue combo resides on the real Liberty Island on New York Harbor. You mad? Shina, I'm not gonna read that word. Leads. This leads to some interesting parallels. During World War II, scientists at the Koff Manhattan Project, Koff, I don't know if this is 4chan and this is like a Nazi dog whistle with the co- I don't know what's going on there. Developed two nuclear weapons for use against Japan. The first of the weapon- Oh no, they're just referencing the fact that Manhattan is where you kind of encounter Victini. Okay, sorry. I, I, my mind is fucking poisoned. I'm so sorry. I need to stop reading online politics. Developed two nuclear weapons for use against Japan. The first of the weapon deployed was Little Boy. Little Boy was tiny, only in comparison to Fat Man, a weapon that used a different detonation method. One of the primary forces unleashed in a nuclear explosion, second only in intensity to the crushing overpressure of the blast, but causing far more damage over a much larger radius is fire. Victini unlimited energy is a pretty clear reference to nuclear power, really, is it? Knowing that his fire type is likely a reference to a nuclear fireball, Victini is a nuclear weapon Pokemon returned to the United States in the cutest form possible. They didn't even mention that the victory in, in Victini's name is the fact that that caused the victory of the US over Japan in World War II, right? Fucking stupid. <laughs> I could have, everything that was in that post, I could have just thought of myself when I read Victini is the atomic bomb. Yeah, I know the USA had already won, but it would have taken more deaths if they would kept fighting, so they just wanted to end it by using an atomic bomb. I know, I understand, okay? It's just, they just managed to prevent, oh, maybe that. I, I, my history is really bad. I didn't know about the Russia thing. Sega Pico games. I've never heard of this. Sega Pico Pokemon. The Sega Pico is an edutainment console developed by Sega. The Pico used book-shaped cartridges known as Storyware. Each time a player turns the page of the cartridge, the screen changes to replicate the image of a book. The games are controlled by buttons and styles. The back page of each book features a drawing mode where the players can insert stamps or characters from another book. In 2005, in Japan, only was succeeded in advance. Uh, okay, there's some dumb fucking learning books, apparently, for Pokemon. Who cares? Okay, cool. Yoshi. We're getting to Yoshi now. Yoshi is a Pokemon, fan theory. In the Mario universe, Mario has an obedient companion named Yoshi. He hatches from an egg that looks generally like this. Yoshis are also known to be able to lay produce eggs like so. In the Pokemon universe, Pokemon are obedient to their trainers. Pokemon, most of them, reproduce by laying eggs. They all, that all look like this. Hmm. And when they hatch, they are obedient to the trainer they hatched with. Yoshi eggs are Pokemon eggs, and Pokemon eggs look the same, and both Yoshi and Pokemon obey the person they hatched with. Yoshi lets their master ride them and control the abilities, eating enemies, flying, spinning fireballs, etc., and Pokemon battle for their trainers. Therefore, Yoshi are Pokemon. But there's more! That means that Mario is a low-level Pokemon trainer since Yoshi is a Pokemon, and that the Mushroom Kingdom is another Pokemon region like Kanto, Jota, and Hoenn. Oh, this looks way more interesting. Thank you. Dragonite evolves into Yoshi. The Dragonite evolves in- Yeah, this is way more interesting. What the fuck is that shit? <laughs> The Dragonite Evolves into Yoshi Legend is an urban legend revolving around the 1996 role-playing games Pokemon Red and Blue. The April 1999 of Expert Gamer magazine displayed an article allegedly detailing the method to get the Pokemon Dragonite to evolve into Yoshi, the famous dinosaur character from the Mario series. According to the method, obtaining this ridiculous sounding feat to require two people, one with Pokemon Red and one with Pokemon two Blue, both players would have to compete, complete the entire game and collect all 150 Pokemon, Mews excluded in this case of the myth. Of course, one person with both versions of the game would could complete it by him. him herself. The two player would then have to trade, the red player would have to trade a Dratini to the blue player who would then evolve it all the way up to Dragonite and then trade it back. The red player would then have to go to the basement of the unknown dungeon, surf to the location in which Mewtwo could be found, and use a Firestone to evolve Dragonite into Yoshi. Yoshi would allegedly be designated as number 999 of 99 the Pokedex. As expected, the entire method was an April Fool's Day joke. <laughs> That's pretty cute. This fucking screenshot. It's fucking stupid. Pokemon 4. Does anyone know what this is about? I have no- I don't even know how to Google this. The fourth movie. It's a YouTube video. Sequel to Pokemon 3. Pokemon 4th of July edition. Okay, I have no idea what this is about. I have no idea how to Google this. Alright. Giovanni commits suicide. This one's, uh, pretty cool. I think. Did Giovanni commit suicide in HeartGold Soul Silver? Recently watched the English version of the Giovanni event battle in Harkle Silver and noticed a few extremely noticeable quotes and mysterious noise. Okay, fight Giovanni, nobody cares. Dude, remember when Pokemon actually had events that you could do to get the Pokemon and had like little stories? God, that was cool. There was a splash. 
After Giovanni trembles literally from defeat and makes his leave, the normal walking out of cave sound effect isn't heard and instead there is a splash sound followed by dead silence. As Giovanni's secret hideout was in Tojo Falls, the entrance was directly next to the rapid waters and he could have committed or at least attempted suicide. After the splash sound, the radio signals from the Goldenrod Tower, Team Rocket members, where is Giovanni gone? I wonder if he's coming, as if to give you the assumption that he has forever vanished. Ethan, they keep calling their boss. I feel sorry that they don't know he's not coming. Giovanni never told Ethan or the protagonist that he won't go to Goldenrod. How did Ethan know? Does anyone agree with me that Giovanni might have committed suicide? Okay. This was never released outside of Japan. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Ruby? Um. All right. Giovanni commits suicide. That's, I, honestly, I feel like this one's pretty well known. Mr. Mime is Ash's dad. This is so cringe. I know, right? It's fucking hilarious. Mr. Mime is Ash's dad. <laughs> For starters, Ash's dad is only mentioned by his mother at the beginning of season one. She says that he was a great trainer but left long ago to pursue his Pokemon journey. Feels like that excuse could very easily be abused for the wrong reasons, but hey. This has led to many wild theories as to who Ash's real father might be. One of these theories claims that Mr. Mime is Ash's real dad. Although that theory, def is, theory is definitely not true, he wasn't here at the start of season one, thankfully. Mr. Mime is definitely a bit of a stepdad to Ash. Wait. This where is the... Mine's been shown over time as being helpful around the house. He mops, sweeps. Is there anything more to this? Ash is using a step down in battles now. Really cool here. The postcards in Lola show clear and irrefutable evidence Gen 8 region will be in the UK. It's really... <laughs> it's a deep cut. God damn it. I can't believe the fucking region was actually in the UK. But my video from that still stands. His reasoning was garbage as to why it would be in the UK. That it doesn't change anything, but that he was actually correct, right? The fact that he got, like, that he guessed it correctly, or maybe he knew some insider info, because I know a bunch of people knew, um, doesn't mean that, uh, his reasoning in that video was any better. A Mr. Mime is a master of pantomime. It can convince others that something as unseeable actually exists. Once believed, the imaginary object has become real. Looks like Mr. Mime convinced this guy of his theory. True! True. Alright. Oops. We got that. The Hooked Dragonite. Does anyone know what this is about? I've never heard of this. Apparently this is a glitch. The Hooked Dragonite is a notable glitch encounter in Pokemon Red and Blue caused by a path buffer overflow that happens when the player talks to the Pewter Museum Guide NPC from an unexpected coordinate. It was discovered by Paco81 in 2009 and analyzed blah blah blah. YouTube video. Let's look at the YouTube video. 16 minutes! Okay. Where is the Hooked Dragonite? Oh, he fights you. The hooked dragon with the, its actual text in the game? Okay, that's kind of cool. Not gonna lie, probably a coincidence. This is just that. No, this is a real glitch. That's kind of cool. Is is the text when you when you catch a Pokemon with fishing? Does it say something with hooked? Because I feel like this is just a combination of different text from the game, right? I assume. Yeah, that's really cool. I didn't know about this. This is actually really cool. Huh. It's probably just a bunch of garbled text together because it says here that it has like a bunch of different results, right? And this is probably just one of the ones that's like actually interesting. This is really cool. Okay. So we got that. C Marvel documents. What are the C Marvel documents? Does anyone know what this is about? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to follow. If these got crazier, like the Ron Paul one should be way down here. Um, I think the Yoshi one is pretty adequately placed. Um, the Hook Dragonite should be way down here for sure. What the fuck are the C Marvel documents? Oh, confidential documents. So apparently in C Marvel, there's a document found in a file cabinet in room two. Whoops. Um, the text of the document differs depending on whether Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire is being played. The file label confidential contains stained documents. The documents have a a dates way before you were born. This is kind of cool. Combine. Oh, you can combine the two from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It's Devon's secret investigation report. The development of a new energy turned out to be true. The energy that uses Pokemon bioenergy is called infinite energy. Investigation report on Watson. A series of actions related to cancellation of the new Marvel project turned out to be true. I recommend promptly disciplinary action against him as a traitor to our group. Doc Team E Leader Operative. What? This is really cool. C Marvel Employee ID Group Leader Stern. Excavation Unit Number 8. The bookshelf that the player examines in order to the spirit tomb holds paper describing the Raz 
Rizo Cosmo was held responsible for using an odd keystone that was donated to the sea marble by the Orberg mine in Sinnoh. In the dusty bookcase are old papers covered in detailed statements and records of payments made. The text is blurred in places and hard to read. There's a lot here, holy shit. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I guess this is just like niche Pokemon knowledge. Ah, uh, fuck, I have to cut the Ron Paul video up. God damn it. We'll do that later. Okay. What is the alchemy theory? Oh, is this about sun and moon? Where, where can I read up on the actual theory? Arisio made this? Let's read this Reddit post, I guess. So now there seems to be a theme of alchemy in this game, but I'm sure enough of you know all the theories out there. So now that we have this Ultra Beast UB01, and it seems to sound like this is a beast, is maybe a human in disguise or something like that. So the point of this thread is to bring in all those alchemy theories back to the table and fit the new pieces we have from today's trailer. I'll start putting pieces in this post feel free to add on. This is gonna be really funny to read now that the games are actually out, huh? From my boy Arizo on YouTube and paraphrased by Inquisitor.com. In his Pokemon Sun and Moon Theory, Iwanko's Secrets Solved video, Arizo points out that connecting the three starter Pokemon, Lit and Poplio and Rowlet, to the three principal alchemy symbols is nothing new. Litten's eyes and forehead marking make up an approximation of the symbol for sulfur. Wait, where is this? There's an image for this. Hold on. Ah! I don't know, boys. I don't know about this one, boys. I like how they had to bring Poplio into this position to make it even remotely fit. I don't know about this one, boys. Um, okay. The three principal alchemy is the new Litten's eyes, blah blah blah. Pablo's body. Rowlet's round body looks like it's salt. I found that when seen in the pose in which Iwanko is dis depicted in the recent Korokoro leak, the Pokemon's body, complete with paws, head, and ears, strongly resembles the alchem alchemical symbol for lead. Lead is a metal found in rocks, which ties back to Iwanko's previously bewildering rock typing. What is Iwanko? Oh, is that Rufflet? Rufflet? One might see this theory as a bit too much of a stretch if it were the only ves vestige of alchemy and al alchemical symbols in the Pokemon Sun and Moon, but it isn't. Oh, really? Tell me more. Far from it, in fact. Even in the small amount of information we already know about the upcoming Pokemon games, we have already seen plenty of other evidence that alchemy is at the core of the game's mythos. Yeah? For instance, Solgaleo is virtually confirmed to represent the figure of a lion eating the sun, common in alchemy-related texts. Solgaleo's Pokedex description even says Solgaleo is sometimes known as the beast that devours the sun. Okay, that's pretty... actually, that's pretty cool. I don't know how relevant that is to alchemy, but if that's true, that's pretty cool. In the footage where we see Lunala, the moon Pokemon, at a darkened temple, we can clearly see the alchemical symbol for Earth etched on the stone wall behind the Pokemon. Okay, yeah. The four islands of Alola, the Hawaii-inspired region in which Pokemon Sun and Moon will take place, are representatives of the alchemy's four elements, Earth, Water, Fire, and Air. With the Earth Island being home to a series of canyons, the Water Island holding a giant waterfall, the Fire Island boasting a huge volcano, and the Air Island sp sporting a very tall mountain that reaches past the clouds. Hmm... Yeah, sure. I don't know about that. Um, Project Azoth and Azoth Kingdom are concepts that have already been basically confirmed to play very important roles in Pokemon Sun. We have literally never heard of that before, but okay. The origins of the mythical Pokemon Magirna and Azoth is a term used to refer to the element Mercury in, you guess it, Alchem- Yeah, okay, shut the fuck up. Okay, nobody cares about this. This is fucking stupid. Um, Gen 4 Meth. Anyone know what this refers to? Because Googling Gen 4 Meth Pokemon brings up nothing. I don't know what this is supposed to refer to. Cool Trainer Nick Advanced AI. Someone told me about this yesterday. Um, that the Cool Trainer Nick AI in the Buck Kenshin Contest in Gen 2 is basically programmed to always beat you and fuck you over. Something about that, right? Might just be VG inside jokes. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, identical spin does, I assume, is about the fact that spin patterns are like mathematically almost impossible to be identical because um, there's so many variations of them. All right, humans or Pokemon? There's a crystal meth ramming, but it has nothing to do with Gen 4. I assume he means VP, right? Do we have to watch the MathPat video? I really don't want to watch a MathPat video. I think I'd rather not do that. Is there any written form of this theory? I really don't want to watch a MathPat video. Gaming spin around. Give me a franchise that is profound. Uh, uh, sorry, no, we've done more than enough Pokemon episodes. Thank you very much. Let's try this again. Wheel of Gaming spin spans fun. Land on a series. Shut that... the Gaming. There are so many other games that I want to talk about.
doesn't seem to solve the problem we're talking about here. I mentioned the words lavender and town, and we're close. Long skit just to justify doing another video on Pokemon. Today we're joined by fellow gamer and Poke expert Jewitz. It's actually pronounced the Jewitz. Sorry, the Jewitz. Now I don't think it's a surprise to anyone to hear that there are some extreme Pokemon theories out there. The Great Pokemon War, Lavender Town Syndrome, the whole business with your rivals eradicate. And in general, these theories paint the Pokemon world to be a bleak, depressing place. But the problem with a lot of these theories is that there's either not much evidence for them, or there's not much else to say about them. This show True. may sometimes be accused of reading like bad fan fiction, but at least it's well substantiated bad fan fiction. Regardless, there's one facet of Pokemon lore that has gone largely ignored by the fan community. Probably because it's buried in text that no one bothers to read. Well, except for us. And that's the bizarre connection between humans and Pokemon. If you thought Pokemon franchise was strange before, you ain't seen nothing yet. It all starts in Kanalabe Library. Among the shelves of the library, you'll find many myths of the Pokemon world, but there are a few that stand out. In particular, a piece of Sinnoh folklore that reads as follows. There lived a Pokemon in a forest. In the forest, the Pokemon shed its hide to sleep as a human. What this seems to suggest is that Pokemon and humans were once one and the same, but it doesn't stop there. The next myth actually spells it out. There once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. It was a time uh -huh. when there existed no difference to distinguish the two. And if we want to get really technical uh -huh. with it, the original literal translation of this passage reads, there once were Pokemon that married people. This was a normal thing because long ago people and Pokemon were the same. What they're saying is that at one point in the history of the Pokemon world, human animal marriages were acceptable. <laughs> oh man, and here I was all these years feeling awkward for having a crush on Hitmon Chan. Phew, that's a relief. I feel like a <laughs> Ah, good joke. Twits, these are just myths. It's in here that we There's more to connect humans and Pokemon than anyone would bother to read. Tick in graves. Each retains memories of its former life. Each of them carries a mask that used to be its face when it was human. Now that's pretty weird. But remember, this is coming from the definitive source of information from the Pokemon world. The decks ain't no Wikipedia, my friends. And Yamask? Real quick, uh, one of the things that I think is really interesting about Pokedex entries and the way we think about them is that, like, they make no sense reading it as, like, a scientific journal, right? Because there's so much, like, contradicting shit so much shit that doesn't make sense i think the way to read pokedex entries is like folklore right like arceus didn't actually create the pokemon universe but people believe that it did right isn't the only one. Clearly, there is some link between the human and soul of Pokemon creatures throughout the series. Here's the entry for Generation 6's Phantom. These Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died while lost in the forest. So take one dead child, add one tree stump, and you get Pokemon. Rated E for everyone. It has never been this dark. But it goes all the way back to Generation 1 Pokemon before the game developers started to get desperate for ideas. Just look at Fire Red's Kadabra. It happened one morning. A boy with extra sensory powers awoke in bed, transformed into Kadabra. End quote. Who wrote this thing, Franz Kafka? I love how no matter of fact this is. It is this is this already the explanation for Kadabra or human children? Okay, cool. I don't care about this. This is dumb. I'm not watching this video. It's fucking unbearable. Okay. Humans are Pokemon. We don't have any evidence to promote it, but got to push out another video for my YouTube channel. Make 10 million views, I guess. Okay. Pokemon movie promotes abstinence. Now, that one sounds interesting. I love media readings. Does anyone know what this is about? Proto Mario... Oh, I'm actually in the VP thread right now that I got this from. There's a few explanations here. I can't find the abstinence one. It's a Wikipedia link to a song. Don't Say You Love Me is the debut single by M2M, a Norwegian pop duo consisting of someone and someone else. Um, background and composition. Is this, what does this have to do with anything? Okay, apparently it appeared in the Pokemon film. You said you love me, but what's that about? Slight difference in lyrics between Pokemon used in Pokemon the first movie and the one released on Shades of Purple. The Shades of Purple version includes the line, you start kissing me, what's that about? And the Pokemon version says, the lyric says, you said you love me, what, what's that about? When asked about the lyric change in an interview, M2M replied, the Pokemon people didn't find it appropriate to have kissing in the lyrics because it was for younger kids. We think the lyric change was stupid. The original version is the one we wanted to go with. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Figured that one out. That's kind of cool. Wally is the protagonist. Am I the only one who remembers the scene where Mewtwo says, Come inside me, Charizard, please? I think we watched different Pokemon movies, my friend. What is Wally is the protagonist about? Has anyone heard of this? Oh, Wally is the protagonist, and you're playing as the rival. The real plot is about Wally becoming a Pokemon trainer to overcome his weakness, and you are just one of the characters that help him grow as a trainer and as a person. You know what? I like that one. That one's pretty cute. That one's pretty cute. Wally's the protagonist, you're the rival. I don't think... The thing is, Wally show. No, because Wally learns how to catch a Pokemon with you, right? He doesn't show you how to. In, in, in terms of the gameplay, yeah, he does show you how to. But in the story, it's framed as him learning how to catch the Pokemon. That's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, what is Tin Tower Reincarnations? Oh, is that is that about the fact that the the um the legendary beasts, the legendary dogs or whatever, the Raikou, Sukun, and Ente or um reincarnated Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon? I think that's what that what that's supposed to be about, right? I think so. So I guess I knew about this. <laughs> Brock is Medusa. Okay. Let me, before I look this up, I'm going to say, 
He has rock Pokemon, uh, which supports it, and he ha always has his eyes closed, and if he opens his eyes, he turns someone to stone. I'm gonna assume that that's what it's about. I wonder if there's anything more to it. Why Brock always has his eyes closed? Brock from Pokemon is cursed with mythic eyes of the Gorgon Medusa. If he opens his eyes and looks at someone, they would turn to stone. This is why he became a rock type Pokemon trainer. You cannot turn stone into stone. True! Okay. Yeah, I was right. Cool. Song about male impregnation. Okay, this one I saw earlier in the VP thread. This is actually interesting. Um, so the song, yeah, this is Homestuck. Um, the song that Toby Fox contributed in Sword and Shield was originally composed during a Homestuck forum user protest when mods banned Mpreg fanfic. Look up the baby is you, Toby Fox radiation. Toby Fox, maker of Undertale, trolled the fan boards of his previous project by making an Mpreg rock opera and posting it there. Toby Fox also made the Battle Frontier theme in Sword and Shield in which he sampled one of the songs from his rock opera. What? That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Alright. That's pretty cool. Wait, can we listen to the song? Is there a video that shows like where he sampled it from and shows it side by side or something? This is the Pokemon track. And this is from the rock opera about male impregnation. <laughs> That's a good meme. That's a good ass meme. Alright. Almost done, boys. Ash is his own dad. I started late today, Liam. Apparently people in the VP thread got it, though. Alright. Um... Catherine connection. Is this a what is what is Catherine? It's a game, and apparently there's unused music in Catherine. I don't I don't know why. I don't know what this has to do with Pokemon. I have no idea. Oh, apparently there's unused music in the game Catherine. That sounds like this. So. An original arrangement of the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Wild Pokemon Battle theme. This track is in a directory called Multi. The, the fucking volume slider on this goddamn fucking website is so garbage. I'm sorry I blew out your ears, but these people can't design a fucking website. What is this? How am I supposed to lower or do anything to this? What is this? <sighs> sorry. This is as low as I can go. I'm sorry. Apparently, this is an original arrangement of the Diamond Pearl Wild Battle theme. Oh yeah, I can hear it. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we got that figured out. Um, Pokemon caused Indian elephant extinction. Raichu Pokedex entry, how can kill an Indian elephant? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. We read about that earlier with the real animals shit. All right, Diglett found in real. Diglett found in real life. I don't know. I don't know what the Diglett one is about, and nobody else in the 4chan thread knows. So I, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, it's literally this image. That's that's very obviously a Photoshop. But okay. Yeah, I don't care. Um, Kadabra human children. We talked about that earlier. It's literally in the Pokedex entry of Kadabra. I don't know if there's a larger theory connected to it. Yeah, in the in the Pokedex entry for Kadabra, it says that a child slept, fall, fell asleep, and then woke up a Kadabra. I don't know. Oh, you guys can't see it. Sorry. Here is the fucking Diglett. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. It's right in there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, um, 
And then finally, finally, I don't know why this is so far down. This is 11 million views on YouTube. Trusty frying pan as a drying pan. Okay, I don't know why that's so far down, but okay. Um, cool. We done? We've explained. I think we've explained everything, right? We don't know what the fuck Dawn fan is. Um, nobody in the VP thread knows what the Dawn fan is. Was there another one we couldn't explain? Gen 4 meth, I have no idea. The tweaking glitch in Gen 4 to access events. Tweaking is a glitch exclusively to the core series generation 4 games that causes improper load. Oh, this is what they use in the speedruns. I don't know what that has to do with meth, but okay. 